Good evening, welcome to Bells and Whistles Sports Show live on Riverside Radio. I'm your host for the evening, Jermaine. Alongside me today we have Nando, we have special guests, Mason Wick, yeah. trainer, yeah. father, yeah. Danny Wick, yeah. and we have Gemma Wick. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for yeah. coming out. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna start with boxing. We're gonna we're gonna start with a bit of Gemma's uh, journey. Yeah. Uh, I read your story in on BBC. Uh -huh. uh, I'll come and I was very inspired by a story. Uh, so for fans who and people listening who might not be who might be listening today, can you tell us a bit about your story? Uh, okay, so um, started way back when I was sort of nine years old. Started suffering um, badly with depression, self harm, things like that. And um, from there onwards, my journey just got worse. In this, um, by the time I was sixteen, I was alcohol dependent. Um, my life just it come crashing down but when I was down the doctor sort of I think he tried every drug there was and he said you know try the gym uh, so I did and we tried boxing and um, I loved it and um, from very early on in boxing my mental health started improving I started uh, to wean myself with my medication and um, as I did that um, life just seemed for the first time ever you know it just seemed to sort of I don't know it was, it was my life changed uh, my mental health was I was stable I was strong um, I, I um, been through rehab I got myself the alcohol and um, I enjoyed the boxing so much that I uh, uh, within months I was doing every class that wasn't the gym I was doing jiu-jitsu I was doing I was doing MMA I was doing K1 and um, I think within six months I had my first MMA fight and um, won that. It, it just made me hungry for more. I think I think the high I got from fighting was more more than a high I'd ever got off any alcohol drug before, and um, it made me fe feel better than any medication I had before. So I just I found my new my new coping strategy, and that was that was boxing. That was fighting. Wow, what a story! So obviously. Tell us a bit about your story. Obviously, you were yeah, pregnant week, and you were yeah. boxing while pregnant. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Well, um, I married my coach, Dan, and um, quite quickly I fell pregnant, completely unplanned. So um, that sort of threw up some fun from words, didn't it? Yeah, it's all good fun, huh? Yeah, well, of course it was. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so I carried on training all the way through the pregnancy. Um, and um, I wasn't sparring the first pregnancy, um, but I carried on sort of doing the drills and bag work and stuff like that and um, uh, pregnancy, the delivery was really easily, um, really easy and then um, went back to yeah. sparring and everything quite soon after but I picked up a few habits where I hadn't been sparring. So uh, the second time I felt pregnant and I was training I decided to keep up the sparring but there's only a few people who still spar me because I'm obviously a bit nervous, obviously there's no body shots but just keeping my movement up, things like that. So. Um, then that pregnancy and the two after I've carried on sparring and pretty much training exactly how I would right. um, as, as in fight camp. And then um, oh, had, uh, I had our last daughter. Yeah, and the fight, the fight, fight come up, didn't it? As you were pregnant. It went, yeah, I was pregnant, yeah, when I was pregnant with the last. Yeah, we agreed to the fight before you we Yeah, I was about seven months pregnant. Um, the Queensbury, they come down to visit us in the gym and they said there's a fight there for you. 
you know, would you be ready? And I said, yeah, yeah, no, I'd be ready. So, um, I didn't believe you though, did they? No, no, they didn't, no. I told you, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, said to Ross Minnis, you make the weight, no problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was on weight four yeah. weeks after I had her. Yeah. And then, um, wow. yeah, I, was, I felt fit. I just think uh, the training all the way through. But um, to be frank said. with her, yeah, people like, to us it's normal. God, I know it sounds, <laughs> it sounds nuts to some people, but to us, like, living life in the gym and the boxing and the kids, it is just normal. So for, for, life, so for Gemma to have the fight nine weeks after having yeah. uh, our baby, it was just normal. It was nothing to us. Yeah. So everyone else was like, oh, that's crazy, you know what I mean? What she did. And we were like, no, it's just it's normal. You know what I mean? Like in our, in our house, and, and we, uh, that's the gym, we call it our house. It's just the kids are always with us. And that's to everybody. Everybody in the gym, you know, the kids are around us all the time. It's, I think that children should be around it. It gives it, it teaches them discipline, it teaches them what's right, what's wrong, when when to do something and when not to do something. Do you know what I mean? So I think when, when people sort of they, they shy the kids away from stuff like that sometimes I think it's crazy myself, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day it teaches you a very, very tough discipline line in, in life. You know what I mean? And I think it's good and the kids love it, don't they? Yeah, 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 it's normal to them. So they they leave school and then they come to, with us to the gym. Whereas you know, mates are going home having their dinner and going to bed, they're around boxing every day. Yeah, she's fighting again next week. Okay, brilliant. So tell us a bit about the fight. Yeah. Uh, your opponent, do you know much about your opponent? No, we don't. I've, I've seen, I think I've seen like half a round of her yeah, doing a bit of sparring. She looks quite aggressive, aggressive yeah. which um, I'm really looking forward to. I want a really good fight <laughs> next week. So I'm hoping, and it looks like she's going to bring it. I want to. I want to show off a bit of skill. I think I think you know, like uh, styles make fights, and um, by looks of her, I reckon I reckon we're gonna um, yeah, have a good fight. Out. I think it's gonna be good. Hopefully, I can like showcase some this, <coughs> some more skill than I did last time. I felt um, the fight I had last time was um, it was a, it was a frustrating fight uh, fight, but I, you know, the outcome was still great. But um, bit of a holder, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Next week I'm I'm the fight. I'm looking forward to um, moving around a bit. Having some fun. So, Gemma, sorry, there's a screen in front of me, so I can't see you. But um, who do you look up to in, in the in the sport of boxing uh, in the women's division? Oh, Kate Taylor's amazing. Her story's amazing. Yeah. Um, having to like pretend she was a boy just to get fights as a kid. I mean, that's amazing. She had that was like she was born to be a fighter, and um, her relationship with her dad. I think I think she's very inspiring. And um, I, I always thought she was a lot younger than she actually is. So it kind of gives me hope. She's only two years younger than me. <laughs> so I thought, oh, you know, I'm too old, you know. But she's not. No, she, she gives me hope that there's there's more for me in the future. I definitely think that. I think, I think women boxing, uh, say, 10 years ago was frowned upon. You know, there's, there's fighters out there like you know, Jane Couch and that. And she had to do that hard way. You know, she had to do it hard way. And, um, and nowadays it seems like the doors are open. Uh, one question I would like to ask, how was the training after you were pregnant? Like how, was it like, rigorous, was it, was it hard? I just carried on as normal. Well, I was straight in the fight camp. <laughs> yeah, no, so yeah. I had Trixie on Sunday, and I was uh, out the hospital on Monday. No, yeah, Monday yeah, I come home, yeah, yeah. Tuesday I was training. Yeah, so can say Tuesday. Yeah. Obviously, I had to go a little bit lighter because I was a bit fragile, but I was sparring on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just think because I haven't stopped the training, my body, it, you know, I just. But she's got, got like, she, she's got a good group of women around her. Like, so, like, the trouble is with women boxing, I think, is sometimes when you go to gyms, there's only one or two women there, and they've got to train with the men. Now, no disrespect to men training with the women because that's cool, but when a man goes like say spars with a woman, it's either two ways. The guy either gets really insulted and he just goes too all out on her, yeah? Not saying that a, uh, a woman can't cope with that, because they can. What I'm trying to say is, is when you've got a good group of women around each other and they're bouncing off each other, it's very much like the same thing as the lads, you know? I'm not saying that women can't bounce off the lads and the lads can't bounce off the women, but she's got a good group of ladies around her and they all sort of bounce off each other and uh, you know they all fight, not all of them, but they you know, they got a good thing going on and she's got people that she can spar with while she was pregnant that obviously didn't hit, hit her to the belly, but they still moved about and, 
and went no, through emotions. No, 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 uh, me and my partner, Andy Lawrence, and John Woods, and John Rutherford, we all got together. We all, we all sort of come from different backgrounds. And when we got together, House of Pain, we you know, cater for it all. The MMA, the K1, the Thai, the boxing. And um, over, the, over the last few years, we've just got bigger and, and, and better and more, more honing in on, on our aspects. Or right, before, we used to just all chuck in together and, and just and try and Pull it all off together. We've got the so, yeah, so now, you know, so we've got it all, got it all good now. We've got it all under one roof, and it's all sort of, it's running well. Brilliant, that's brilliant. So, Gemma, your your story, um, the article that I read, I, I actually sent it to a few people, and they all literally said you're not just an inspiration to women, but to anyone that has suffered from mental health before. Definitely. Um, I know firsthand how hard it is being a parent, especially with a newborn. Um, for anyone that's a parent that hasn't got time to go to the gym, do you have any advice on how to um, cope with that strain on their mental health? The, we've got a running pushchair. We put the kids in the pushchair and we run with the kids. The kids come everywhere with us. I mean, I know it's, you can't take a kid to every gym, but there are other things you can do. I mean, you know, um, just running, getting outside, definitely getting outside. You can't lock yourselves, and that's the easiest thing to do when you're feeling feeling down and feel you, you lock them doors and you you lock everybody out of your life. But you need to you need to force yourself to get out that that door. Whether you you're going for a run, you're swimming, you, you manage to get to some sort of gym. I think that is important. But you've really got to kick your own ass to that gym and get yourself out of that house because it's too easy to just turn off. I think sometimes you, um, she doesn't give herself enough credit generally. Um, she, she really was a bad place. I think um, I can't learn anything because it can't get onto a very strong woman. I do think that it's helped you dramatically. Um, changing yeah, definitely saved my life. Yeah, definitely. Just, just exercise in itself it doesn't have to be, you know, you, know, you don't have to compete in boxing. And, do football, uh, I do things like uh, just getting out there and just, like you say, get a bit of fresh air, get the baby in the jogger and just go. Just, you know, the worst thing to do is just shut them doors. Yeah, exactly. so yeah you, let, you let the anxiety Yeah, we're right now. That's yeah. it. It's shut so curtains. easy to feel, feel bad and get swallowed in that hole. Exactly. But if you've got enough strength inside of you to force yourself to get out and do something, you're going to feel a million times better after you've done half an hour, an hour, whatever you're going to do. Yeah. I, I can remember a time. And the, 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 well, with Gemma, she was having a, like, a real bad, rough spell on it. Yeah? And uh, she did that, she shut the curtain and shut the door, locked the door and all that. And I went round there, went round there, I opened the door, I opened the curtains, and I said, right, at least you get your ass out, yeah. And we're going, I'm not you know, arguing. Anyway, managed to get in the car, and I took her out to like, the forest. We went miles, and I literally just we went miles out to the forest, and I just, just got, we got out of the car and said, right, you've got, you know, you've got two options. I said, can you stamp your feet yeah, and, and be like where you're at now? Because I'm going to start running. I said, I'm either going to leave you in the middle of nowhere, because you don't know where you're at, or you're going to start running with me. <laughs> and she was not happy, but like, uh, a good couple of miles down, a good couple of miles yeah. down. Called your names yeah. for a good couple yeah, of miles, Yeah, a good couple of miles down the road, you know, she started seeing, you know, she was, Grateful for, for the fresh air. I think that day was the breakthrough yeah, after I started coming yeah, up on medication. Yeah, I think yeah, that was the day. Right. Yeah, good. things Definitely started remember. to take a yeah. turn. And when someone's going through that, I sometimes think they need a little bit of tough love. Yeah, they do. Because that's that motivation definitely. to push them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, need, you need some positive people around you. Of course. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I feel if you, you the trouble is it's easy. Tough. Yeah. I mean, if you've got and negative people around you, definitely. You're gonna, mm. it's gonna, you're gonna be negative. Do you know what I mean? Course. If you've got positive people around you, you're gonna be positive. Do you know what I mean? It, it's like a, it's like a virus. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It you're like a sponge. It's like you absorb yeah. whatever exactly. energy is yeah. around yeah. you. So I mean, sometimes I feel sorry for these, these, these like, like, like Mason and people coming up into this generation because there's so much negativity. People feed off it. You know, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. You know, social like, media helps. Yeah, social media is a great thing, and it's also it can be a real mad thing because. You know, they see someone succeed or they see someone happier. Uh, uh, then jealousy hits. Yeah, yeah. definitely. 
and it's, it's, it's bad, right? Because everyone should be should be out there to help each other. Yeah. Social media has definitely got its positives and its yeah, negatives. Of course, sure. like of anything. Course. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and there is, that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, um, that's a bit like, especially in sports like boxing, football, you can help you help yourself on the way with that. But it can also be the downfall. Right? Sure. We're going to take a little break and when we come back we're going to speak to Mace as well about his uh, up and coming career, the start of his career. Mm. We'll be right back. <laughs>